The level 102 is pretty reasonable, and today I want to show you the four types of turrets in this target and how you can use their weaknesses to beat this target for instant map repair. Hey everyone, Derpy here, welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. I'm going to be going into a little bit slower than my standard run in this target when I'm explaining a few things. First of all, is this first turret type right here is a short range radioactive turret. It is not going to do damage to you if you outrange it, which is exactly what I'm going to do right here. As the target starts, I'm just going to click on that, all the ships will move there and stay at max range and kill this guy. If you happen to get close, it's not too big a deal, it just will do some accuracy based damage to whatever ship is the closest here, which is generally uh, one at random if you're using most people's builds. My build is a tiny bit different and I'll show you that at the very end. But these short range targets, just avoid them, stay at max range when possible. That won't be when we talk about turret type number 3. But before we get there, let's talk about turret type number 2, and that is this snowball turret right here. This thing is a ballistic turret, and it has what's called a king killer mechanism on there. This means that this shoots at your ship with the highest armor points on it. And for everyone, that is the flagship. The flagship has base stats of higher armor points, so it's going to get targeted first. For that reason, we all made the flagship a very high abade ship last raid, and that worked great. Intel Kixi fixed a bug, and now it doesn't have over 100% evade, which shouldn't have happened in the first place. So you're going to take some damage from this. Most people still had a pretty high evade, evade uh, flagship. Mine is a bit higher than most, and that's going to allow me to sort of just sit in this damage field right here and take very little damage. Notice there's no red mark here. I haven't actually been hit by anything yet. But you don't want to take too long here because 5 out of every 100 shots or 10 out of every 100 shots are going to do damage to you and are going to hurt. So just try and kill these things earlier if you can, if possible. Now, I am going to move a bit quickly through this one because the weapon I'm using does have an ability where it increases its, its splash if you keep firing, which is great. So I just moved in extremely quickly there and killed turret type number 3, which is the glacial turret. Let's pause and talk about them with these two right here. Now it is kind of hard to see what the glacial turret is, but it does do a massive amount of splash damage and it is dump fire. So if you stay moving, you can avoid this thing. And again, it does have a uh, dead zone. Get inside this and you'll be fine. Just make sure you're really all the way inside it. I wouldn't risk it. I'd kill this thing first. Now when I was killing this turret, I was in range of several other short range turrets here. Not a big deal. Those do very little damage to me and I end up... Uh, killing the whole platform really quickly because the weapon has a splash stat that does build up as you keep moving. Now for these next few turrets, I'm actually just going to press S and auto the cluster here, which is how I would drive it for most people, just stay at max range and shoot at these things. If you do have a UZ fleet and don't have any of those CICs equipped, your evade is going to be pretty low, so those snowball launchers are going to start to hurt you quite a lot. I'm not too worried about them, so I'm just driving how people with my build or the general archetype should try and drive these targets. Now, this last cluster here, you can come at it towards the end, or I can do a little bit earlier. I chose to do a little bit early here, or earlier here, just kill those and move into the glacial. Again, stay moving against this glacial and you'll be fine. Kill that here and target the second glacial while being inside its minimum range. Once that's dead, you can move a little further away and get away from the short range turrets here and just press S and start shooting things. If your uh, splash is a little bit lower when you start killing this platform, you'll have a few more things to kill, but it's not too much of an issue. There are some other random buildings at the top of the target here. Don't worry about them. The uh, battle ends before you get there. Now, taking a look at the damage report, it is pretty interesting. There is some radioactive damage that shows up on here. Looks like those few short-range turrets that shot at me managed to miss completely. If you see a giant red mark here, and by giant I mean like 5 or 10%, you're going to want to make sure you're not getting hit by the glacial because that's what that means. Now in terms of the other stat here, you can see that I did take some damage in this target, but I took um, less than one quarter of my damage was um, actually taken versus was resisted by my survival, so it just shows up as resisted. These battle reports are a little bit weird, and the uh, sum of the resisted and the taken is what's important when looking at overall percentages. My evade is so high, pretty much everything here is evaded. Looking at the actual damage, which is the important thing, this is 2 minutes and 44 seconds, which is instant map repair. 
Now, because there are these dumb fire turrets in these targets, these glacials, turret type number three, turret type number four was a short range, um, another heavy turret, we'll see that in the 103 video for sure. Now, if you auto this, you take about an hour damage, you could reduce that significantly using a steel head screw and that would help out a lot. I'm using a sea serpents because when I drive semi-correctly, I only take uh, evadable damage. So sea serpents definitely helps out for this target right here. It's not a requirement, but if you have a lower evade ship, you're going to want to use a sea serpents crew for sure. Uh, steel heads is the one to use if you are against something that is giving you some radioactive damage, which would be the glacials. In terms of the build, it will be in the builds document I have linked in the YouTube description. The flagship is a bit weird. It does have uh, three of eight upgrades, Guidance Square number three, and then a, a combat speed special, the standard engine, and several different weapons on here to make up for combat speed special I had to take off to put on more evade upgrades here. So my evade is up to just over here at, um, if I go to defense stat, at 82% before being boosted by the crew of 24% and the CICs, which I believe add 10% to all of these things. It doesn't quite stack. You can't just add them straight up here. That's what ha was happening last raid. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's a story for another time. Now, these next four ships are all built the same, and yes, they are up to X1. Unfortunately, I can't scrap my fleet and completely rebuild it. Um, that would just take a little bit too much money that I don't have for battle parts. Anyway, I'm not going to build a U0 fleet if I have an X11. I got it done for free, so why not use it? So there's a build I have here. I will be updating my build stock with my new flagship build right there, as you did see. If you have any questions on the raid so far, go ahead and let me know. I will be trying to make a 103 video pretty shortly here. Raid got started for me about four hours later than it usually does, so I'm trying to get a few videos out here on the first day for sure still. Anyway, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. In other words, I want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone whose names appear on screen now. These channel members really make these videos uh, possible here and is part of why I'm still around making these YouTube videos. Anyway, and until next time, this is going to be Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.